this morning. Praise oh, God. Woke up this morning with a man. Exactly. Oh, Jesus. Woke up this morning with a man. Uh-oh. 705. 705. 705. All right. Whoever said to pray us in, go right ahead and pray us in. Hallelujah. Sister Arlene, you said you was praying? Excuse me? Did you say you was going to pray us in? Oh, I, I will do that. Absolutely. I didn't say it, but you know, uh, but I will. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you this evening, Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving in our yes. hearts. Yes. Thanking you for everything, God. Yes. Thanking you for how you woke up this morning, woke Thank us you. up this morning and started us on our way. Yes. With you, a Lord. portion of our health and strength, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Yes. We thank you for the word that we are about to receive, that yes, we are Lord. going in. And God, position us to study your word. Let it become a part of us, dear yes. Heavenly yeah. Father. Let us walk daily with you, God. Let us seek you in all of your goodness, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, everyone under the sound of my voice, dear Heavenly Father, bless them. Yes, Lord. Because we all need you, God. We need you right now. In a mighty God. way. In a mighty Lord, way. You, unity is what we need because when we have unity and even studying the word, God, it's powerful when we are on one accord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Studying your word, dear Heavenly Father. So let us go forth, dear Heavenly Father, tonight. I want to ask you to surround your angels, around the angel that you put in place for us, Pastor McCoy, yes. dear Heavenly Father, and as he comes forth to bring us the word of studying it, dear Heavenly Father, go with him. Anoint him continuously, dear Heavenly yes. Father. But we need yes. you, God. Yes, we Lord. need yes, you, Lord. Lord. Because we are in troubled times, God. We are yes. in troubled times. And sometimes, God, it seems like there is no way. But the only way that we know is your way, dear Heavenly yes. Father. Yeah. Yes, so Lord. let us seek you and your ways and to come to an understanding of your word. <laughs> Let it be, uh, uh, let it anoint us to go forth to anoint someone else with your word, dear Heavenly Father. So, dear God, we just thank you. Thank you. We thank you for Pastor McCoy. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the abundant heart church, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for every entity of that church, That's all right. of the associate ministers, yes. dear Heavenly Father. We give you praise this evening, dear Heavenly yes. Father. And we're going to give you all the glory we're gonna no, honor you dear heavenly father we're yes. gonna praise you to your heavenly father and we are going to allow you to order our steps yes lord for you yes, said lord. a good man is ordered by you god our steps are ordered by you Yes. So I thanking you this evening, asking you to forgive us of our sins by thought, word, and deed as we go forth in your word. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for that fervent prayer, Sister Smith. And we are still having our discussion about Joseph. <laughs> we are in Genesis chapter 41 we left off at verse 40 but we'll pick, we'll start at 37 um we this chapter 41 picks up 2 years after Joseph had interpreted the dreams of the butler and the baker um the butler finally remembers Joseph and what Joseph did for him and he tells Pharaoh about Joseph and how accurately and quickly that Joseph interpreted his dreams and that Joseph would be able to interpret the dreams that Pharaoh had. Pharaoh had dreams about kind, he had dreams about corn, and that there would be, and he did not understand uh, what the dreams meant. 
his all of his wise men and all of his counselors could not interpret the dreams. Um, but Joseph shows up and says, God will give you the interpretation of Amen. your dreams. And Amen. this is and this is what your dreams mean. And he told them your dreams mean that there's going to be seven years of prosperity and seven years of famine. And as we read about what was going to come to pass. And Joseph said that the famine was going to be so great that what you have in the fat years was not going to be enough to sustain you through the, the years of the famine. And then Joseph gave him instruction on what to do during the years of prosperity that they would survive through the years of the famine. And Pharaoh listened. Pharaoh listened to Joseph. He heeded the advice of Joseph. And so we this has been the story of Joseph who was who was betrayed by his family, separated us for his family. Because at this time it's been 13 years. Uh he was thrown in the pit at 17. His brothers plotted to kill him. They sold him into slavery to make some money off of him. He was in part of his house, uh, where he was accused of raping his wife, thrown into prison. And now He's out of prison and before Pharaoh and interpreting his dreams. And that brings us to verse 37 and to just to discuss how Pharaoh deals with Joseph and, and how God, it was just with Joseph. Uh, so 37 picks up and says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, in the eyes of all his servants. Everything that Joseph said, that God spoke through Joseph to Pharaoh, Pharaoh received it. Pharaoh acknowledged that it was good. Even all of his certain servants acknowledged that the advice that came from a prisoner, from a slave, was good. And... And then Pharaoh says, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of God is? Now that's the testimony right there in of itself. Mm -hmm. That here it is, this great king, Pharaoh, who was the Egypt, one of the great, the, the greatest nation in, in the land at this time, is acknowledging that out of the mouths, out of the mouth of this slave, this little Hebrew boy spoke wise words that needed to be heeded. And then he said, truly, is there anyone greater than him that the spirit of God speaks through and is upon? And this is, that is, that, that is a testament in itself of the goodness of God and the hand of God on Joseph's life that because of the way Joseph lived, because Joseph honored God in everything that he did, that here it is that we have Pharaoh is acknowledging God because of Joseph acknowledging God, giving God the glory. And here it is, this king that Pharaoh, because in the Egyptian, they had many false gods, gods that they worship and praised all the time. And here it is, he is acknowledging the one true God and saying, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? He said, the spirit of God is in this man. And so when we truly live a life, truly live a life for God and serve God, you know, we say now, so let my little light shine. We sing that all the time. But do we really let our light shine? Do we really allow our life to be a testimony for God? Do we really allow people to see Christ in us by the way we live for Christ in everything we do? Joseph truly put his best foot forward in everything that he did. No matter what his circumstances were, no matter what he was facing, he always glorified God, gave God the glory for everything. And he lived his life to please God. And we should live our life the same. And truly, because of the way he lived his life, even though he went through all the things that he went through. Pharaoh sits there and says, truly, the spirit of God is in him. Is there anyone else like him that the spirit of God is in? And that is just a testament of, of God's hand being upon Joseph's life. 
God revealing the truth about who Joseph was and who God revealing himself through Joseph. Um, any comments? 39 says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God have showed thee. Now listen, here it is. Pharaoh is still acknowledging God. He says, for as much as God has showed, showed thee all this. So Pharaoh's acknowledging that it is God that has showed Joseph all these things and that has revealed to Joseph all the things that Joseph spoke. He's saying God has done this. And so Pharaoh is honoring God now and giving God the glory. And that's just something to take note of, that we have here a powerful king that is acknowledging God and even acknowledging Joseph, a slave, a man that could have, in his own wisdom, leaned to his own understanding and said, I'm not listening, listening to this slave. I'm not going to heed your God that I that I don't know. He could have had an attitude, all of that. But yet here he is in his wisdom. He's acknowledging God. And he says, show all the, there is none so discreet and wise as our heart. And so now he says, there's no one wiser than you. There's no one as discreet as you. And we think about Joseph and how Joseph handled his business in the house of Potiphar. So much so well that God calls him to prosper there, calls Potiphar to prosper. Potiphar was so wealthy that the, the word said that he didn't even realize all he knew he had was the bread before him. But what a life of integrity that Joseph led, that he never took anything from Potiphar, that he would not sin against God and he would not commit a crime or sin against, sin against Potiphar for that matter. He honored God in everything that he did. And we truly should honor God in everything that we do. We should want people to look at us and see God in us. See that we are people of integrity, that we love God, that we honor God in everything that we do. We should want people to see when we talk to them and we give them godly advice and we live before them that this is wise counsel that we're giving. Because the greatest counsel we can give them is can only come from God. And that's what Joseph did. He gave him the counsel of God and told him, God will interpret your dreams. And he told him, God will tell you what to do in this situation, in these circumstances. And even with that, do we put ourselves in a place where we can hear the voice of God? Where we can listen to God, hear what he's telling us. And just as God is dealing with this situation and telling Joseph what to tell Pharaoh, and as Pharaoh is heeding the words of God, giving Pharaoh direction, God will give us direction for our life. And he, he said, he testifies of his son, is what the word of God tells us. Jesus told, describes the Sadducees, and Pharisees, you search the scriptures, but yet the scriptures testify of me. And we can see, and Pharaoh goes on and he says, thou shall be over my house, according to my word, shall all my people be ruled. Thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Go ahead, Pastor. For clarification, Pharaoh, is that a title? Of it's a title. A leader of that country. I'm, I'm referring to Moses and and and. The, the children that was in bondage there. Yeah. It's, it's a, a title. Title, different different time, different period. Yeah, so it's it's the same title, but it just indicates, it's just like saying king or queen. It's just a title of authority, title of position, the analogy that it's a position. Um, all of them all of them had names, but a mm -hmm. lot of times when we're in the Bible, it doesn't always give the name, it just says Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is really just a title that they held. And the position. So, because even when we get to once this Pharaoh dies, another Pharaoh takes his place and becomes becomes Pharaoh. So it's just an acknowledgement of that position, like saying president. So, so it's pretty much the equivalent of that during this time. Any other comments or questions? 
So, and as we get through this chapter and by the time Joseph dies and then by the end of the book of Genesis, this Pharaoh is going to pass and the next Pharaoh is going to be quite different than this <laughs> Pharaoh. He is not going to acknowledge any of them at all. Well, not only he's not going <laughs> to acknowledge any of them, but he and and speaking of that, we're going to see a very stark difference and contrast between this Pharaoh who acknowledges God, who is not afraid of the children of Israel, right. this Pharaoh who wants to bless the children of Israel, to a Pharaoh that is going to listen to ungodly advice and is very afraid of the people of Israel and it becomes his undoing. Right. Two very, two very different leaders. Okay. Two very distinct and different leaders uh, that are just uh, sitting on the throne, uh, but they deal with the children of Israel very differently. And it's um, kind of like in our country here. Absolutely. Different leaders. Yep. And every time you get a different leader uh, and different ruling body, things, those that advise them, things go differently. So whatever president we get, sometimes things get worse. Sometimes things get better. Sometimes things just stay the same. Um, and a lot of times too, it's, it's the people that are, that are also giving them advice. Cause you know, the Bible says, uh, the safety and the multitude of counselor, you know, but we should seek godly advice, sound advice. Uh, but that's not always the case. Um, that is the, this, and that's going to be a great difference between this Pharaoh and the next Pharaoh. That, Just one comment on that. All these people, good or bad, are in that position because God put them there. Absolutely. God God put God says he he puts he puts people on the throne. He tears people he tears the throne down. Uh he says he created good and evil for his purposes. Uh so everything God's will is being done. You know, the beautiful thing is no matter who we are, God always gives us an opportunity to accept him and choose him. Because even as we get, um, when we get to the book of Exodus and we start to talk about this other Pharaoh, God gives him an opportunity to repent. And then it is one of the, one of the most profound things, I think, is where we, it says God hardened his heart so he couldn't repent. And so we, a lot of times, I tell people all the time, we, God is loving. Don't play with God. Because when God gets tired, he's tired. And he's going to deal with you. However, he chooses to deal with you. And when he got tired of Pharaoh, but he gave him an opportunity to repent and change up yeah. to the point where he said, nowhere else in the Bible I read where God, now God says he'll turn people over to a reprobate mind. He'll let people begin to be believe a lie and the delusions that they're in. But nowhere else in the Bible do I read where God's intentionally hardened the heart of someone, except for this next favor that comes along. But anyway, any other comments and questions? Yeah, uh, with, the, with this Pharaoh, God showed him his goodness. Yes. Now, the one that's coming is going to feel his wrath. Absolutely. And that's and that's to show you that uh the the Pharaoh that's present now made life easier for the Israelites and Egypt. Absolutely. Now we'll go around the other way. Now they're gonna find out the the real side of God when, when you when you play him. Absolutely. That's the lesson that we should watch as we have Pharaoh what what it really cost him. Cost him a lot. God said, Touch not my anointing. You know, and at the end of the day. You know, God is God. And the beautiful thing is, is when you honor God, whether you are his or not, but when you honor God, God is paying attention to that and God will do that. But this Pharaoh truly honored God and he had a lot of respect for God and for Joseph. So much to the point that, as we just read, he put Joseph over his entire house and said that everybody will do what you do, what you say that he says, no one would be greater than you except me, and I will only be greater than you in the throne. Uh, but we're going to get, as we go on and, and read through this thing, 
uh, I don't remember if it was this chapter or in another chapter to, that I was reading where it says Joseph was a father unto Pharaoh. And in that, and that in itself is a powerful statement because although Pharaoh says you will not be greater than me in the throne, but if Joseph is being a father to Joseph, yeah. he was, he was greater than him, period. Because, you know, we listen, we listen to our fathers. We follow the examples and things that our father has set and that we should follow and let God be an example to us and our father. He says, and but that, that, yes, ma'am. And, and the fact that I, I believe that this Pharaoh was an older man than, than, um, than Joseph, because of course Absolutely. Joseph was, you know, he was a young man. He was 30 at that time. Yes. And, and, and for him to say that, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's definitely a godly thing for him to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this pride was not a, well, didn't come into this at all. Right. And, and and at all that this man would humble himself as a Pharaoh and to give away all his power and authority so that Joseph can rule. Um, and just and like we've talked before last week, that Joseph was an archetype of Jesus. And just as God, the father, said all power in Jesus is all power and authority is given to me. And so at some point, all power and authority is given to Jesus to rule on the behalf of God. And right. it's because of that and him dying on the cross that we have everlasting life and we get a chance to become the sons and daughters of God. And so this is this is a picture of Jesus and what Jesus is gonna do. And Jesus, just as Joseph is a messenger here for God, Jesus is a messenger for God. And so there, there are parallels here. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. Um, and Pharaoh said unto, said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He says over everything, all of the land of Egypt. And just like Jesus has given up, been given all power and authority, that like Jesus is the King of King, Lord of Lords, God of God. Uh, Joseph is given all power and authority over all of the land for him to deal with. And then this is also beautiful too because joseph could abuse that power and authority but he did not he used it to serve people he used it to serve everyone jesus died for everyone jesus wants he says i come i i come i didn't come for those that were that are healed and that are healed he said i come for those that are sick i've come they need me Jesus came to serve everyone and give everyone an opportunity to accept him. He says, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, and none comes, none come to the Father except by me. Um, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Now, Joseph's all of Joseph's troubles <laughs> started with a coat of multiple colors that his father put on him that made his brothers envious and jealous of him and made them want to kill him, to destroy him. Um, and here it is. He was stripped of everything that he had, made poor. Now he's, God has exalted him and re restored him. And Jesus walked this earth, went through a lot of things. Jesus ultimately gave up his life. He, he gave up everything for us because we were bought with a price. And then when it was all said and done, he was dead and buried three days. And he sits on the right hand of the throne now. Praise, thank God that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall have everlasting life. That if we would choose him. And now Joseph has put, Joseph has been elevated, restored to his rightful place as ruler. And now as his dreams were foretold that his family would have to bow to him. And now 
he's in that position where that will happen. And we'll start to, we'll see that in the next couple of chapters. And it says, and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in the vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Not only that, Pharaoh had the nation bow <laughs> to Joseph. From a from so, sold into slavery, exalted, humbled himself under God's hand, and now God has exalted him to where he wants to be. But I also, as Sister Roshan pointed out last week, you know, everything is in God's time. We have to be patient. We have to be where God wants us to be. We have to let it, it when God says all things works for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, we really have to believe that. We really have to believe that and trust that what God is doing is for our best. And that God is working something out on our behalf. And truly in Joseph's case, he was. And the word of God also says, God says, I have nothing but thoughts of peace towards you. And there is an expected end. So we really have to believe that no matter what we're going through, if God says he has nothing but thoughts of peace toward us, that God's will for our life will come to pass. But Will we honor God through the process? Will we honor God and be patient and wait? Joseph waited 13 years, 13 years. And when he had a real glimmer of hope, he had to wait two years before he, he stopped. And then we find out in a I think chapter 45, I think is where it's at. We find a little about, about him and how he felt when he was in that pit. Um, any comments or questions? I just wanted to say what you just said. We have to have patience. Yes, ma'am. And, yes, ma and we're and we not and we're not patient people. So we have to practice being patient because we want what we want when we want it, and that's not the way it is. Yes, and so. So for those of you that are watching, if you want to come into the Zoom meeting, um, I will put the the link in the in the link in the chat on Facebook so that you can do that. You have to join the Zoom meeting. Otherwise, you just have to watch. You just have to watch and listen. Uh, so I will put it out there for you, Alex. All right. Um, so as I do that, let me. It says and. He made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him rule over, over all the land of Egypt. Um, and I just think that, you know, Joseph was so humble. Mm -hmm. He never thought more highly of himself uh, than anything else. And then I think, and I think about, uh, you know, Pastor Burke said when we, while we were talking about Joseph, that this was all that this was about Joseph being a servant, about God working some things out in Joseph's character and preparing Joseph for this for this very moment. Joseph could have been full of hate, malice and anger about a lot of things being separated from his family in the way that he was treated. But he kept his focus on God. And as he kept his focus on God, God was working things out in Joseph, preparing Joseph for this very moment. And sometimes the things we go through, God is preparing us for the next chapter in our life or for the next, for the next, next story, for the next position, the next phase of our life. And we really just have to be patient um, and allow God to do his work and to do his will and not be in a, not to be in a hurry for any of that. Um, but it's not always easy. We, uh, we don't always want to want to be patient and wait on God to do what he's doing. 
um, and to get us to where we need to be. Um, verse 44 says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Now that's a statement. That's a statement that Pharaoh has made that no man, no matter what, no matter what it is, is going to lift up a hand, period, without you saying it's okay. Now that's something to go from a slave to now a man of great authority that nothing can be done if you don't approve of it. He went from being a slave where he could tell no one what to do and now he can tell everybody what to do. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. If anything was to be done, Joseph had to approve it. Man. Now, uh, that kind of power, that kind of authority would corrupt a lot of people and change a lot of things for people. Uh, but it did not with Joseph. Joseph remained who he was. He remained humble. He he did what he was supposed to do. He served God, gave God the honor and the glory that he that God deserved. Uh, and that's what he did. Uh, and we just need to serve God. And wherever God has put us, whatever position he's put us in, we need to be humble and it need to, we need to focus on serving God and giving God, giving God the glory. Uh, and not using it to advance ourselves or our own agenda, but just simply honoring God with what we do, period. Um, and that's what we really need to do. So 45 says, and Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephaniah, Pani, Paniya, and he gave him to wife Asenah, the daughter of Potiphar, Potiphar priest of on and Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Not only that, he gave Joseph gave Joseph a wife. Um, so even Joseph was being obedient to Pharaoh and accepted the things of of Pharaoh that Pharaoh wanted done. Um, and just to give him an opportunity to to serve and put him in a position that he was taken care of. Um, any comments or questions? Yeah, Before just one. Yes. Uh, so given all of this authority and and <clears throat> no one could do anything without his permission, but look what he did. Once he did that, then he went out over all the land. He, he didn't have this big office where he sat and wait for people to come to him. And that was a, a catch verse to me, that now with all of this authority, he could have all these people coming to him, telling him what to do, but instead he went out among the people of all of throughout Egypt. Yes, he did. He did. He served. He, he didn't just he, he, did, he, he didn't wait to be he didn't wait to be served. He served. Amen. Amen. Uh Verse 46 said, and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. And that's where I get the 13 years for, because he was he was around the age of 17 when he was thrown in the pit. And it says, and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And as Pastor Birch just pointed out, he didn't sit and wait for people to come to him. He went out, got to know the people. He went out and surveyed the land. He went out to see and be a, and understand and to serve the people that he's with. You know, you can't just sit up on your sit up on your high throne and bark orders and and not be in touch with those you serve. And so. Joseph was a uh, Joseph was approachable. He served. 
Um, and he was available. He was available. Even though he had all this power and authority, he did not let it keep him from being who he was. Uh, any comments or questions? You know, that's the same thing that Jesus did. He didn't, he didn't have the people come to him. He went to the people. He went out to serve. He showed them uh, what true humbleism was. And that's uh, uh, a representation of what uh, God has shown uh, Joseph what to do. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, it's just or, a time. Say that again. I said, uh, it's just a Tanya Wingate just wanted us to know that they're watching it on YouTube. Oh, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good to have you, Wingate family. We love you guys. All right. Verse 47. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. So during those years of plenty, the earth yielded its, its crops and it was plenteous. And it said, he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Now, that should just make us pause and think that that description of the food and how much it was and that it was so great he said it was as the as the sand of the sea that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of sand and then it says it was without number he stopped counting it because they just couldn't count it anymore because it was so great now this is this is a great harvest that he has taken in during this time of prosperity and to store it up. And the, as he gave the description of what the dreams mean, he also made the statement that no matter what they took up during the seven years of prosperity, seven years of plenty, that that harvest would not be enough alone to sustain them through the years of the famine is what he told Pharaoh. And here it is. But God gave him a plan on how to do that, what needed to be done to sustain them through that famine. And but when we read this, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of food in seven years that they stored up. And yet it, and see, sometimes what we have, so hear me, sometimes what we have it's not enough when we don't deal with it and be good stewards over the way God would have us to do. When we don't, when we're not dealing with what God has blessed us with according to his will, according to his instruction and according to his guidance, it's not enough. But if we will do things the way God would have us to do and honor God, by following his instruction and his direction and his guidance, what we have will be more than enough. And it's enough to sustain us and keep us if we will just follow the direction of God. Without the direction of God, Egypt truly would have suffered. Egypt would have been wiped out and decimated. And one of the things I took from this is that as God gave Joseph, the interpretation of the dreams. Joseph said, God will tell you what to do, Pharaoh. God will give you the give you the interpretation of the dream. God will tell you what to do with your life if you will just listen. Put yourself in a position to hear God. And then when God tells you, if you will just follow his instruction, follow his word, heed his word, you'll be successful in those things. But without God, then you run the risk of those things failing and not being successful. But here it is, and I and I and I want to stress, he says that it was like the sand of the sea. It got to the point it was so much food, he stopped counting it. 
And I cannot, uh, I'm sitting there just thinking about how much food that is when it says it's like the sand of the sea, that they couldn't count it anymore. And that part of the interpretation of the dream was is that it wasn't going to be enough to sustain anybody during the time of the famine. But yet God had a plan that would sustain them and keep them through this time. God's plans never fail. We just need to get in God's plan for our life. We just need to ask God what he would have us to do. We need to be good stewards over what God has given us and be happy with what God has given us until he blesses us with more. But a lot of times we're just, we're not patient. We're not good stewards over the thing that God has given us. Sister Angela said, it's like the boxing analogy that says matches aren't won in the ring. They're won by practice, diet, dis and discipline, et cetera. Amen. Amen. Boxing matches are won by training, by practice. The things you do, the preparation that you take, following the rules, uh, doing the hard work and putting in the work uh, brings about the right results. And a lot of times we're too busy looking for shortcuts when there are no sh shortcuts. And truly, we need to honor God. Any comments, any other comments or questions? That's why God tells us to be fast to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. Amen, brother. Amen. Um, verse 50. 50 says, And unto Joseph were born, born two sons before the years of famine, came which was Ashna, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bear unto him. And Joseph called the name of the first son Manasseh. For God said, he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Woo. Now, now that's a mouthful. And that also gives us a glimpse into, because often as we have read the story of Joseph, as we talked about Joseph, um, this is one of the first instances of where we get a glimpse into what, what Joseph was feeling, what Joseph was thinking about his situation. Uh, we got a little bit of the backstory when he gave it to the, gave it to the butler uh, that some things bothered Joseph. But here it says he called his firstborn son Manasseh. For God said, he have made me forget all my toil. He says, it is God that has made me forget all my toil. God was with me through all this time. God kept me. God, and he says, and my father's house. And say so he says, and sometimes when we're separated from, from the things we love, the things that we cherish the most, there's a reason. And we need really to ask, because God says there's a reason for everything. And we really need to ask God, why am I separated from these things? What is it that you want me to learn? What is it want you, be, you want me to get out of this? Uh, but Joseph called the name of his firstborn son Manasseh, for God said he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. What God has for you is greater than everything that you're going through. We just have to stay the course. And this gives us a glimpse into you. Know, Joseph was hurt by what happened to him. But he did not let his hurt and his pain, his suffering, keep him from serving God. He did not let his hurt and his pain keep him from serving others. He honored God with everything that he did. Um, he says, God, it made me forget all my toil. And the things that some of us are going through, we need to give them to God. God, is, God will help us through those things. God can help us get past some of the hurt and pain that we have. He can help us be healed from that, but we have to give it to him. And we have to be willing to serve him and to follow him. Um, verse 52, it says, in the name of the second sect of the second called Ephraim, for God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. <laughs> Oh, the, the grace and mercy of God. Joseph, in what he named his sons, he says, God, and literally he's saying, God was with me 
God made me forget my what uh, helped me through my toils, through my pain, through my anger, all that I felt, all I went through. God helped me to forget that. My family that I was ripped from, God. God helped me to get past those things. And then he says, and then not only did God do that, in my affliction. Now, that's important. He didn't say, he didn't say God prospered him after his affliction was over. He says, God made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. He says, while I was going through, God made me fruitful. In the midst of my hurt and my pain, in the midst of everything I had to deal with, me being abandoned by my family, being betrayed by my brothers, being thrown in the pit, being thrown into slavery, serving as a slave in part of his house, being thrown in jail. Through all of that hurt and that pain and all the things that I went through, through my trials and my tribulations, God calls me to be fruitful. Sometimes we need, yes. Uh, you're muted, Pastor. Because he gave God the glory. Amen. Amen. He gave God the glory. And he's acknowledging God in everything. And he's, and we need to acknowledge God and give God the glory for everything. And he's, he says, in my affliction, everything I'm going to do. Most of us, and I say not there, all of us sometimes find it hard to see God in the midst of our affliction. Sometimes in the midst of our affliction, we find it hard to see that fruitful. Joseph said, and he has given God the glory. He says, God made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. What an attitude of gratefulness. What an attitude of honor and glory toward for God and to give God that, to reverence God, to acknowledge that even though I know I'm in my land of affliction and things I can consider them bad, but Joseph says, I was fruitful during the during that time. And he says, I was fruitful because of God, and he gave God the glory. We really need to take a step back, look at what we're going through, but we really need to look at what God is doing during that time in our land of affliction. And then be grateful for what God is doing, what he has done, and give him the glory for it. And you might just find out you're, you are fruitful. And some of us will look at Joseph's life and say, how can he count that joy? How can he say he's fruitful being a slave, not free, being locked up and in prison? How can he say he was he was?" Fruitful. How can he say he was fruitful when he was sold into slavery, when his family betrayed him? He was fruitful because he had God. And the question becomes, do you have God? And are you serving him? Any comments or questions? And that also means that he had a humble heart. Yes, he had a humble heart. Yes, Joseph had a humble heart. God says, humble yourself under my hand and I will exalt you in, in my time. And Joseph was humble. And even as he sits on this throne and his elder pointed out earlier, he went out in the land. Joseph was humble. He was a servant. He had a servant's heart. Um, any other comments? All right. 53. It says, and the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all the lands, but in but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Wow. Wow. The only place that had food was the land of Egypt. All says everywhere else 
in all the other lands, there was famine. The only place where bread could be found. The only place where salvation could be found. Deliverance could be found. Was in the land of Egypt, where Joseph was. The only place we're going to find salvation is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The only place we're going to find deliverance is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life. He says, I give you water to drink and you'll never thirst again. He's our everything. He has everything you need. God said, I will supply all your needs. We're so busy running to the world for the answers to our issues and our problems. Um, but we really need to run to God and have God's will done in our life. Um, it says, and when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And so now the people are crying out because they are hungry, even in the land of Egypt. But there was bread. It says, and when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, what he saved to you, do. He says, go to Joseph. The one I, the one God pointed out, the one God gave the plan, the one that God entrusted to do this, the one God had me put over all the over all the land of Egypt. Go to Joseph, because now even in the land of e Egypt, the Egyptians were hungry, but there was bread in the land. Where are you seeking the substance for your life? Are you seeking it in God? Or are you seeking it in the world? And when all the land of Egypt was famished and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread and Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, that he, what he saith unto you, do. And the famine was all over, ooh, now listen, that says, and the famine was all over the face of the earth. But we know, we know that in the land of Egypt, there was food. But it says in all of the earth, there was a famine. And the only place you could find bread was in Egypt. If you want to be provided for by God, you need to be where God would have you to be. And you need to go where God is and stop seeking God where he's not. You need to seek God where he is, where God says the provision is. That's where you need to go. And so now all the world has to go where God is moving and where God is doing the thing. And that says in all of the earth, there was famine. And it goes on and says, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And so now he opens up the storehouses so that they can be fed. If you want to be fed, you got to go where God is. You got to be where God would have you to be. Jesus, God said, while there's yet light, work. While there's time. It says, Seek, there's going to come a time you ain't going to be able to find Jesus. There's going to come a time when it's too late. So you need to seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 57 says, Hmm. And all countries came unto Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because the famine was so sore in all lands. Wow. Wow. It says in all of the earth, all of the lands, all the countries, everybody came to Egypt. Because Egypt, Egypt had the food. 
we have to seek God where he's at and stop trying to find God in the wrong places. God is clear about where he is. He's clear about what we need to do for him and how we need to serve him. And we just need to follow the guidance and directions, instruction God has given us. And we need to seek him where he says he's at and stop looking for God in all the wrong places. God has provisions for you, but you must go where God says the provisions are. We have to be obedient to God and be what God would have us to be. Whew. And just as the world was starving for salvation and deliverance and a change, God sent Jesus. Just as the world was beginning to die and to perish, God sent the bread of life into the world so that all those who are starving and hungry and want a change in their life could accept Jesus. So we need to accept Jesus. He is the answer. He is the truth. He is the way. And he is the life. And no one comes to the Father except by him. He is the gatekeeper. The only way to get to God, all the way to get to heaven, is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is our portion. We were bought with a price. So who do you serve and who have you accepted? Any last comments or questions? Thoughts? We will be in Genesis chapter 42 next week. Um, any last thoughts or comments on chapter 41? You know, God sent Jesus into this world to be a light. We either are going to accept that light or not accept it. Period. No, all right. No comments, no questions. Let's see if I got any prayer requests. Not on my phone. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to request prayer for uh, Brother Johnny Smith. Johnny He's one person that comes from Nellis uh, on the fifth Sunday is when I preach. Yes. He had two brothers passed away on the same day in Alabama. Oh, Lord Jesus. In, in different cities. Oh, bless his heart. They're, they're leaving on Saturday to go there. And uh, Linda had prayer with Sister Geneva uh, today. Okay. But, uh, Johnny Smith and family. Yes. Johnny Smith. You said Johnny Smith and family? Johnny Smith and family. Yeah, the family. Yes. Comfort for them. He He's the one that lost two brothers. Yes, sir. On the same day. All right. And I got Betty Carr down. Uh, and Alan and Deborah Borderline. Elaine, do I need to call and pray for Mama? Okay, I will. I'll call after Bible study. All right. Uh, yes, tonight did go by fast. All right. Um, any other prayer requests? Otherwise, um, yes, yes, yes. My aunt, my aunt Thelma Nelson, please. My hundred and three year old aunt, not doing very well. Hundred and three. All right. And pray for my brother Clifford and Vanessa, my nephews Anthony Jenkins, my son McCurtis. Yes, ma'am. The botners of what well, he's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, indeed. Jennifer Hunter. Wingate family. Yes, the Wingate family. Dr. J. And pray for the Yarbrough family. You said Yarbrough? Yes. Y A R B R O U G H. Yarbrough. Bobby other... Yarbrough family. Yes. Any other prayer requests? Double check one last time. All right. <clears throat> Maria Shoop. Raven. Raven. McDowell. Raven. M C D O W. Raven McDowell. Okay. All right. Uh oh. Ooh. All right. If there are no more prayer requests. Let's bow our heads and hearts on one accord. Let's go to the throne. Let's go to the throne of mercy. Ooh. Most heavenly gracious Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, we come giving you all the glory and honor that is right for you, O Lord. God, I, we just come before you, Father, to honor you. God, we just pray that our lives will honor you in everything that we do, O God. God, we pray, I pray, Father, we pray together, Father, that we will just glorify you, that our lives will glorify you, Lord. God, we just thank you for today and every day, Father. We thank you, Father, for the breath that we have and that we're able to live our lives, oh God, and to live them as comfortably as possible, Lord. God, we thank you for the activity of our limbs, Lord. God, we Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross, Father, that we might be saved, Lord. God, we thank you for the food on our table and the clothes on our backs, Lord. God, we thank you, Father, for simply protecting us from the things that we don't see, the things that we never notice, oh God. We thank you for the small things that you do. God, we just thank you that you have ordered our lives and our steps, Lord. God, we thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you, Father, that for our retirement, God, that you provide our needs. We thank you for the roof of our heads, oh God. We thank you that we can come boldly to the throne of mercy, God, and that you will hear our humble cries, Lord. God, we thank you that you have not left us nor forsaken us, Lord. We thank you for every answered prayer, God. We thank you for every maybe, every yes, every wait, every no, Father. We thank you, Father, for you know best and what's best for our lives, Lord. We thank you for the thoughts that you have toward us, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are mindful of us and everything that we go through, Father. God, we thankful before the foundation of the world, oh God, before you spoke the world into existence, Father, that you thought of us, oh God, and that you made a plan to restore us to you, Lord. God, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for our families. We thank you, we thank you, thank you, Father. And God, we ask you to forgive us for the sins we have committed by word, thought, or deed, by omission and commission, Father. God, we ask you to bless us on our jobs, to keep us on our jobs, oh Lord. God, we pray for peace and protection on our jobs, oh God. God, we pray for promotion, God. 
But God, most of all, oh God, we pray that our light will shine no matter where we are, oh God. God, we pray that you will equip us, Lord, to deal with all the challenges of life and all the issues that will flow from the heart, oh God. All the issues of life, Lord. That you will prepare us for those things, oh Lord. God, just give us spiritual discernment, oh God, and open our eyes that we might truly see, Lord. God, I pray that we be discerners of the time, Lord. That we understand your word, Lord. That you will give us the interpretation of it, O Lord, and that we will hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you, Lord. That, God, you will raise us up in the way that we should go, Father. That you will walk and talk with us, O God. That, God, you will be our Father. That you will be our God. That we will be your sons and daughters, be your children, Father. God, speak, Lord. All the things, God, that have gone unspoken, O God, that we haven't given to you, Father. As we think on those things, God, we give them to you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Forgive us, Lord, for not and always acknowledge you. Forgive us, Lord, for not always putting you first, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we have fallen short of your glory, Father. Father, forgive us, Lord, when you have spoken, God, and we did not listen and we did not hear, Father. Forgive us, Lord, when we have been rebellious. Forgive us, Lord. When we, Father, turn our backs on you, Lord, forgive us, Lord, when we give in to temptation, O oh God, and we allow sin to come in our life, Father, forgive us, Lord, when we have not put you first and chosen you over ourselves, over, over something else, Lord. We praise you, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the life that we have, Lord. God, we ask you to restore us and reconcile us to you, Father, that you will speak, Lord, and begin to move in our lives, Father. God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Whatever they need, God, you will meet them at the points of their needs, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, the things that are weighing heavy on our hearts, Lord, I pray that you hear those things and begin to act and move, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, the things that we are carrying, Lord, that we cannot handle by ourselves, Lord, I pray that you surround us with the people to help us carry those things. Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I pray that we will just cast those things at the feet of Jesus because he cares for us, Lord. Yes. God, I pray for those that are struggling with illness, sickness, and disease, oh God, physically, mentally, emotionally, oh God, where we have been hurt, oh God. God, I pray, Father, for those that might be confused, Lord, that, God, that you will just begin to heal them and reveal the truth to them, O Lord. God, I pray for the homeless, the sick, and the shut-in, Lord. I pray for those that, that are beginning to doubt and question if you are real, God. God, I pray that you will just speak to them and send someone to pour into them, O Lord. God, I pray that they will hear your voice and accept your son as their Lord and Savior, Father. God, I pray, Father, that our last days will be our best days, that our last days we will honor you with our life sustenance, Lord. I pray that we will love you with all of our heart and all of our strength and all of our soul, Lord. God, I just pray, Father, that our last days will be full of you, God. God, I pray in our last days we will grow closer to you, O oh God. God, I pray, Father, that as we desire to serve you, God, you will give us opportunities to serve you, oh God. God, that you will strengthen our activities, our, our bonds, our God, that you will strengthen our resolve, that you will strengthen our bodies, God, that we can do the work that you called us to do, Father. God, I pray that we will rest in Christ and he will give us rest for our souls, oh God. God, I pray that we will learn of him, oh God, that we will take on his yoke, oh God. That, God, that we will follow him and deny ourselves, Lord. God, whatever anyone under the sound of my voice is struggling with, Father, I pray that you heal them. I pray that you give them the strength and courage to press their way, oh God. God, I pray that you open up the doors of opportunity, oh God, that we might walk through them, Lord. God, I pray that you close the doors that need to be closed, God. God, I pray that you remove the people out of our lives that should not be in our lives, oh Lord. God, I pray that you just walk and talk with us every step of the way, Lord. God, let us see. 
Let us experience you and have a unique experience with you, oh God. God, I lift up Johnny Smith to your father. I lift up every family that is that is grieving, Father. He's lost two brothers, Father, and I ask you to wrap your arms around him and minister to him, Lord. God, I lift up Betty Carr, Father. God, I pray you touch her heart, Father. Strengthen her heart and let it beat strong, Father. God, I pray that you just touch every inch of her body, God, and that you will just search her to God and that you will heal her, Father. God, she is your child. She believes in you and she trusts you, Lord. So, God, I just pray that you whisper in her ear, God, and let her know that you're with her, God. Comfort her family. Comfort her daughters, Father. Comfort her children, Lord. But, God, comfort her, God. And, God, I just pray that you lift her up and get her off her sick bed, Lord. God, I lift Alan and Deborah brought along to you, Father. God, I just pray that you be with them and strengthen them, Lord, on this journey, oh, God. In their land of affliction, Lord, I pray that you speak and that you move, oh God. I pray that they be fruitful in their land of affliction, Lord. God, I pray that they just cry out and praise you and worship you, Lord. And I ask you, Father, just to heal Alan, oh God. God, trust, allow him to trust you. Allow him to taste and see that you are good, Lord. Restore him and heal him, Father. And I pray that you ease the onset of Parkinson, Lord. God, I pray that you just touch the heart of Deborah, Father, that you massage it, Lord, and that you comfort her, Lord, that you just continue to move with her and keep her, Lord. God, I pray, Father, that for Clifford and Vanessa Smith, Father, that you will just touch them and bring them into your house, O oh Lord, that they will hear your voice and that they will follow you, God, and I pray that we all will follow you, Father. God, I lift my Simon Curtis to you, Father, and I just pray that you strengthen him, oh God, that he will have a made-up mind, Father. Father, I pray that he will know that you love him and that his family loves him, Father. God, I lift Anthony Jenkins to you, Father, and I pray that he will have a made-up mind, Father, to serve you and to please you, Father. God, for all of us that are in our land of affliction, for all of us that are in our land of plenty, for all of us who are in our land of suffering, all of us who are in our land of lack, Father. I pray, Father, that we will glorify you, God. I pray that we, you will teach us to be good steward over what we have, oh God. God, I pray that what we have, oh God, that you will multiply it, oh God, that it will sustain us and keep us, Father. God, I pray that you make the increase in our life, oh God. God, I pray that you make us not beggars, Father but that you make us lenders, Father. God, I pray as Agar prayed, Father, that you will provide everything that we need for the living of our days, oh God, that we might be able to honor you, oh God. God, I pray that you give us what we need in our life, oh God, that we will never have to lean to our own understanding, God. God, I pray that you just open up the, heaven, the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, Father, that we will never have to steal anything, oh God, or do anything, oh God, to satisfy our earthly needs, Father. But that you will just provide them, oh God, in abundance, Father. That we might serve you faithfully, Father. God, I lift up Jeff Patterson to you, Father. He has cancer in one of his eyes, Father, and I just pray that you heal him, Father. I pray that this is his moment, oh God, if he doesn't have a relationship with you, Father, that you will... Draw him to your father. God, I lift up Jennifer Hunter to your father. God, I just pray that you anoint her from the top of her head, Father. God, I pray, Father, that you open her eyes that she might see, Father. God, I pray that you reveal the truth to her, Father, and all the things that she's dealing with, oh God. God, you know what she needs, Father. Meet her at the point of her needs, Father. God, I lift up the Wingate family, Father that you just continue to be with them and strengthen them in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, oh God. God, I just pray that you open up the doors of opportunity for them, oh God. God, that you will just heal them and protect them and be with them, Lord. Continue to bless the children, oh God. God, I lift all of our children to you that you will just bless them and keep them, Father. God, we live in such wicked and evil times now, Father. I just pray that our children will stand on your word and receive you and get to know you, Father. God, I pray, Father, that they will be leaders and not followers, oh God. That they will choose you and choose to be different, Father. 
God, I lift the Yarbrough family to you, Father, that you will just be with them and watch over them and keep them, Father, through all that they're going through, Father. God, I lift Dr. J to you, Father. I pray, Father, that you will make room in her life and time in her life, oh God, that she can join us on Sundays, Father, that she can come and praise and worship you with us, Lord, that she can come in and fellowship with us, Lord. God, I pray that you just make the room in her life for more of you, oh God. God, I pray, Father, that she just continues to make you a priority, oh God. And God, I pray that we all will make you a priority, oh God. God, I pray that you, in all of our lives, that you make room for you in our lives. Oh Lord. God, I pray, Father, that sometimes it was so busy being buried under Satan's yoke, Father, that you will remove the yoke of Satan from our life, oh God, and that we will just simply choose to serve you, oh God. I pray that we come to the realization that we need more of you, oh God. So God, speak and show us what we need to see. God, I left Maria shoot to you, Father. God, I just pray that you walk and talk with her, Lord. God, I pray whatever she's struggling with, oh God, I pray for her relationships, Lord, that you will put things in order, oh God. God, I pray, Father, that if there's anything amiss in any of our lives, oh Lord, that you will set it right, oh God. That God, I pray for peace in our life, oh God. God, I lift the Raven McDowell to your father. God, whatever they're dealing with, oh God, I just pray that you just send someone to pour into this young lady's life, oh God, and to speak to her, oh God. God, help her. Strengthen her to have a made up mind and to choose you, Lord. God, I lift the Cassisa Charleston to your father. God, I pray that you just touch her mind, God. God, I pray that you be with her baby, Ileana, Ileana, Father. I just pray that you just be with them, oh God. God, help her to be the best mother she can be, Father. Help her to be a great mother. God, I pray that you help all of us everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, to be great sons and daughters for you, Father. God, I pray that we be great servants for you. God, I pray that we use our talents and our gifts for you, Father. God, I pray that you make the increase in our life that we will be joyful givers, oh God, that we will serve you, oh God. God, I pray, Father, that we will hear you when you speak, oh God. God, I pray that our lives will just be changed, oh God, and that we will just have a unique experience with you, Lord. God, I pray that we just experience your love every day of our lives, Lord. God, order our steps, Father. May we continually serve you, Father. May praise and worship be continually in our mouths for you, Lord. God, I pray, I ask, Father, that you give us a thirst and desire and a hunger for your word, oh God. God, I pray that we will pray daily and pray without ceasing, God, and that we will make you the head of our life and our priority, O oh Lord. God, forgive us, for we have sinned against you and you alone, Lord. God, move in our lives, O oh God. God, everyone under the sound of my voice is your child, God. Bless us, keep us, order our steps, O oh Lord. All the dreams that we have, Father, bring them to pass, Lord. God, what we need for the living of our days, God, give it to us, Lord. You said you would supply all our needs, Lord. And you said you would give us the desires of our heart, Father. I pray that we delight in you. I pray that we trust you. I pray that we commit our ways to you, Father. Those are the conditions that you set. And you said you would bring it to pass, Lord. You said you are a reward of those who diligently seek you. You said we must first believe that you are God. So God, we confess and we acknowledge that you are God. We accept, confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross for us and that he was dead and buried three days and that he yeah. got up off the cross and he lives. He lives. He's the living son of God. He yes. is our Savior. We love him. We accept him, Father. Send the Holy Spirit anew into our life to lead, guide, and direct us, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, man. I love you guys. Y'all have a good night, and I will see y'all later. Bye. Good night. Good night.